Rocket Fox here, and today, as you probably would have noticed by the title of this video, and by the fact that most of my face is already done up with a makeup look, I'm actually doing something that is not a full look, but a little more of a specific little tidbit. Um, so I've had a few people ask me about um, how it is that I do the moon uh, on my forehead that I do so frequently and so I thought I would do a video that was just specifically that. So here we are, here you are, and here I am. And so that is what I am very thrilled to bring you today. So without really wasting too much time, I'm uh, gonna dive right in. Uh, and so today I am essentially just gonna do a pretty basic one um, just to kind of walk you through my process and um, the, the main thing in going into this that I would say uh, first and foremost is the uh, moon design as well as other facial adornments in makeup and such. Um, I've been doing probably for about three years on average every day. Um, so the biggest thing I would say is uh, just keep at it. It may not turn out the way you exactly want the first time, it's okay. It did not for me either, um, but practice. Just keep going and keep practicing and you will get there. Um, so today I'm actually going to use this. I have a Scone Insanely Intense Tattooed Mini Waterproof Eyeliner. Um, and this actually came in a Ipsy bag. Um, and it is actually one of the eyeliners that I'm using on my actual eyes today. And I say one of because sometimes I will use a liquid liner and then I will actually top it with a NYX retractable mechanical all the other ols uh, black eyeliner as well. And then I will put, in addition to that, a black eyeshadow on top of it to kind of set it all into place because I really want that staying power. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, for the essential shape making for our moon. So uh, in going into this, there are several different ways that I do my moons. Um, pretty much every time I do it, I will make the crescent moon facing upward. Um, you can do different things. That's my preference on it. Um, now you can do different placements, right? You can do a little bit lower. You can do a little bit higher. Um, the, the things to keep in mind as you go um, that I've noticed if you if you do one that's going to be right here between the brows, um, you want to bear in mind that it is going to create the illusion of your brow line continuing. Um, so I've noticed that for myself, if I put one here between the brow line, I do want to leave a little bit of space between the eyebrows. So I'll tend to not have it directly between the brows, maybe a little bit lower or a little bit higher. Um, and if I do have it directly between there, I'll leave a little space so it kind of has a break from the eyebrows. Um, and normally when I do that too, I'll have additional things below and above to kind of create almost a, a diamond shape overall. And today I think what we're going to do is actually have one up here. And this is the most common space that I go with mine. And you'll notice that... Let me get a little brush to show you here. My eyebrows, the way I do them, you'll see that I have a little bit, there's a line kind of with the front end here of both my brows that almost create a little bit of a, oh, an eyebrow runway, as it were, um, which creates a nice kind of open space right here. And I think that's a really nice space to add some decoration in, uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. So you go ahead and get your eyeliner ready. Now, the, the thing to bear in mind with this is you wanna get it centered. Um, that's the first thing. So when I go in, I find that for myself, starting on the left point, uh, I start at the top and I go down and make my circle. I start at the left always. Uh, I've just found for myself that's easier. 
Um, so I will start here at the top and I will start at the point and I, I try and visualize where the center point of my forehead is and start just to the left of that. So go up here and then you'll notice as I do this, it's not one single swoop of a line, right? I actually make a lot of little kind of lines as I go down. And this is similar to the way that I, that I sketch when I'm illustrating too. Um, a lot of people do nice, gorgeous, long swooping lines. And sometimes I do, but more often than not, I make little sketchy lines, just depending. So we have a nice circle going there. And so once I get down here to the center, I actually go back up to the other side and I, I start at the other point. So we're gonna do that, going back up here, and you try and get that even with the height of the other one. And start it kind of at the point, this is gonna be how far your crescent is open. So keep that in mind and now, bring that curve down and I, as I do this, I am looking at both the current curve I'm making, but I'm also looking at the other side to try and keep those two sides even. And one thing you'll notice as I do this, I'm actually using my nose as a rest for my finger. I'm resting my pinky on my nose and that what that's doing is that's helping to add a little stability to my hand. Um, in a place where I'm not having to rest my hand on, say, my mouth, where my lipstick is, or my eyeball, which you don't want to rest your hand on your eyeball. Now that I have the kind of outline of the circle, um, I'm going to go back. This this side is a little a hair flatter along the top than I want. I'm going to go back and round that out just a hair. And the one thing I have noticed just as a heads up, a lot of liquid liners will tend to want to dry out as you go. So it may be the kind of case where you have to take a couple breaks. Now, we're gonna go back and I'm gonna go back to my left side and go back up to the point and you hold this to where the point is facing up in this direction because you want there to be a nice sharp point there. So pull down and just gradually let that shape widen. And we're starting to create the inner outline of our crescent. And just keep going. And then pull that down. And you'll notice as I go, I'm coloring in the rest of the crescent as well. And now I'm gonna, when I get toward the middle, I'm gonna go back here to the other side and do the same thing. and keep that point nice and sharp and then just widen the shape as we go down and color in that crescent as you go so keep going keep going and then you'll notice here now I've I've made I've closed my shape and you'll notice the inside's not quite even, so I'm gonna go back and just kind of add a little more thickness in a couple places to smooth out that interior curve. So just smoothing it out. As much as you can. So we have this 
like this. Okay, let's do it a little bit more. All right, and I'm feeling pretty good about that shape. I'm liking that. Um, now, you'll see here as we get closer, there's a little bit that kind of got not as dark because my pen's starting to dry out a little bit. So we're gonna go back over that just a bit to make sure it's nice and dark. All right, so I'm liking that shape. And what I'm gonna do here now is I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of sparkle on the top of it. So what I'm going to use for this, I have this Laura Geller Ink Credible uh, Waterproof Gel Eyeliner Pencil in After Midnight. And it is a black eyeliner, a mechanical eyeliner that just has a little bit of this silver kind of sparkle in there. So I'm gonna take this and go over the top. Now, depending on the liner that you're using for your base, you may wanna give it a minute or two just to let it dry. Um, Cause sometimes, depending on the liner that you're using for your initial shape, if it is still mobile, if you put this on top or any kind of topper glitter or whatnot, um, it may move the, uh, the base color around. And that is a pain in the butt. Okay, so, and you wanna do this kind of carefully because you want this to stay inside of that nice black shape we just made. So I'm gonna give it a couple passes just so it's nice and sparkly. All right, so there you see, got some nice shine on there. And that is essentially the basics of how I do this. Now, um, a couple little tips as well. If you happen to make a mistake, it happens. I'm actually really mystified on how I did not do that because normally <laughs> I do. Um, so I, I've mentioned this in a couple of my other videos. I do keep a makeup remover wipe at my um, makeup station that is just here all the time and whenever I have anything happen um, on my face that I want to fix I'll actually take and you can keep um, some water with you I just will like stick it on my tongue because I just do um, and you can take and make a put it on the tip of your finger like this and take and just drag it across your skin and clean up any edges and things like that. So that definitely helps uh, to clean up the shape. And additionally, what you can do as well is that um, I find that nail brushes, the, these little tiny brushes that you get for painting details on nails, um, but even, you know, little paint brushes that you get from a craft store or anything like that, but just that have the little tiny, little tiny heads on them. Uh, you can use these and same thing you if you have a little bit of makeup remover or anything like that just wet it just a little bit and then you can take and use that and clean up any edges that you might want to to create a nice smooth shape um, and so that's something that always helps me out and then another thing that you can do is I a lot of times will use this NYX wonder pencil and it's it's like a uh, kind of like a little concealer deal. Um, it doesn't come in a ton of shades, but they're very versatile, I've uh, found. And um, you you sharpen it. This, I wasn't able to get it super, super sharp, but you can actually get it to a pretty fine point. And if you have any um, just little small things that you want to correct, you can take that and you can actually use this pencil and kind of go back in 
and do things like that. And that can actually be really nice if you have a shape and then you want to draw in designs that look like their negative space as well. Um, so this is something that I would recommend additionally. Um, so there you have it. Uh, it's pretty, yeah, I'm hesitant. I don't want to say it's necessarily easy because it does, again, I've been, I've been doing this a lot again, almost, uh, on average every day for the past three years, just because that's been something that I've been doing. So it's, it has taken a lot of time and practice, uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it a lot. And it's it's something that if you want to try, I definitely give it a go. Um, I will, there's a couple different methods I use for doing the moon and the different designs. Um, this is, I think, the easiest and the most basic one. So I will at some point throw up some other methods. And I hope that this was helpful though. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you end up using it or doing anything like that or have any questions, please post in the comments below or hit me up or anything like that. Um, I'm, I'm all over the, the social media these days, um, somehow, some way, <laughs> but definitely post, let me know, hit me with any questions. I would love to know what you think. I would love to see what you end up doing and I am happy to help in any way that I can. So thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing what you do. Take care.